Hello. I just got back. Literally just got back. Came, sat down. Was at Pitch Latino Portland 2024. It was at OMSI, Empirical Theater. Great event, great pitches. We had 11 companies pitching, 11 Latin-led organizations taking the stage, including one that had won Pitch Latino Seattle and another that had won Pitch Latino Bend. And if you're not familiar with the, the Pitch Latino format, companies get up, they get five minutes to pitch. Uh, the MC asks them a single question each just to further clarify their stories. They all had an ask, they all had a QR code, all those kind of good things that, that should happen for a pitch competition. And perhaps most importantly, as I said time and time again, my favorite thing about events like Pitch Latino and Pitch Black is it is not founder as tribute. It is not founder as pure entertainment. Every founder walks away with a prize package of non-dilutive capital that they can do whatever they want with to drive their business forward. So got the opportunity to hear 11 amazing stories. There were, you know, so many companies I was rooting for. I don't even vote. Honestly, I don't vote because I can't, I can't choose a favorite at these kind of events. But uh, when, the, when the dust cleared, the company that walked away with the, everybody walked away with a sizable check. But the one that walked away with the big, big check was Okada. And Okada, if you haven't had the chance to, to hear about them yet, uh, consumer product, not surprising. Okada works on a crema. So, you know, so many good restaurants deliver these amazing crema on, on their, on their dishes, but like trying to get that at home, there's like mass produced crema, or you're trying to approximate something using kind of Americanized sour cream kind of thing. And what Okada is doing is saying, Hey, this, this is Salvadorian crema. So they're going to have uh, several flavors. They're going to have like the original crema. They're going to have a, a tomatillo crema. And then uh, they have a, a tamarindo crema. So uh, all kinds of, of crema, but the perhaps the best part is like in, in a squeeze bottle. So it's user friendly. It's not like, like if, you, if you've gotten crema from the market um, to put on, on food you may be making, you usually just get it in a jar and it's fairly runny and you get a spoon and you like try and drizzle it around and that kind of thing. And then what Okada is doing is not only making amazing Salvadorian crema, but you know, they're also making it easy to use with a squeeze bottle, stuff like that. So they were the crowd favorite. Uh, super excited for them. Super excited for everybody who pitched tonight. Again, saw a ton of amazing companies and congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, since you are likely watching this on YouTube, or maybe you're listening to the podcast, but if you're watching this on YouTube, go to Totus Media right now. They pitched tonight, got a check, but Totus Media, best thing happening on YouTube right now. Don't even ask me why. They're just amazing. They're like food network, but with higher production value and like richer stories and authentic stories. And I, I, I just love what's happening with Totus Media. So if you happen to be here on the YouTube, I'll link it up. I would really love to have you subscribe to them. Don't even subscribe here. Like if you only have one subscribe in you today, go <laughs> subscribe to Totus Media. If you have two, I, I wouldn't mind you hanging out here too, but, but if you just have one, if you're just like, look, I can only subscribe to one channel today, Totos deserves it. They, amazing, amazing channel. I've been uh, just like super happy about their growth and their traction and, and it's only just the beginning. So, uh, head on over there on the YouTube and congratulations again to everybody who took the opportunity to take the stage at Pitch Latino Portland 2024. Our friends at Latino Founders have done it yet again with an amazing Pitch Latino. So congrats to each and every one of you. Thanks for sharing your stories. Okay. You may remember a couple weeks ago, <laughs> 
sorry if I'm a little tired. It's been it's been a day, and then I got all the excitement at Pitch Latino, and I'm a little drained. But I really want to be here with you and sharing the news, so I, I appreciate your grace and patience in me delivering the news. You may remember a couple weeks back, and I'll link it up, that I was that I was sharing a story about people who claimed that there was a business in Portland, a startup in Portland that raised seventy million dollars, and turns out that was false. It was based on dated information wasn't a portland company anymore they had been here at one point but you know they're no longer in portland well this week a company with a portland connection happened to raise 50 million dollars company called crescendo and are they is everybody here for crescendo no no not everybody is here but the ceo is here the ceo and co-founder is here in Portland. So here's the here's the thing. Like in these post-pandemic days, I honestly don't even know how you define a Portland startup anymore. I mean, in the before times, a Portland startup would have been headquartered here, the company would have been here, like people would have been here, maybe a few remote folks here and there. But in these days of modern remote work post-pandemic, Sometimes it's only a few people that are here. So I I always make this like, is this really a Portland startup? Does it deserve coverage in, in kind of the Portland startup world? And because the CEO and co-founder is here, and because that CEO is considering building a Portland office and growing the team here, and finally, because Portland Business Journal, our friend Malia Spencer over at Portland Business Journal decided to cover this. I am saying Crescendo is a Portland startup, and I am standing by that. So Crescendo, a Portland startup, raised $50 million in, I believe, a Series C for them this week. And it was, I think it was announced late last week, but uh, super interesting and important news, especially because another story that Malia wrote was like, venture capital is 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 just way 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 down right now so um the, the it's always nice to see like i i know venture capital is a thing it's not always a good thing but if you're building a venture scale company and you're able to convince investors to put significant capital like this into your company and you are comfortable taking the pros and cons that come with venture capital, then I am happy for you. And so happy to announce Crescendo raising $50 million. I'm calling them a Portland startup. Malia is calling them a Portland startup. I sincerely hope that you call them a Portland startup and we will keep track of their journey as they continue to grow their office and, and their company here in Portland. Speaking of raising money, this one I've talked about quite a bit. Like, it's the only blockchain play that I've really understood and seems to make sense. It's a company here in town, actually headquartered here, that is called the Provenance Chain Network. The Provenance Chain Network basically helps people understand, track, and, and kind of follow where bits and pieces of parts come from as they go into different products. That could be recipes, it could be materials, it could be other parts from other places, but basically what they are doing is tracking the provenance of other products and loading that into the blockchain so that it's trackable and traceable and all of those good things. So anyway, they've been at this for a while. They were part of the, I've totally forgotten the name of it, but the Oregon blockchain accelerator program that was here for one class but uh i'll have to i'll have to dig up the name of it because i'm literally so old and have seen so many accelerators that i can't remember the name of that one i just know it was an oregon-based blockchain accelerator back in the day the provenance chain network was part of that and and really one of the few applications of blockchain technology where i was like you know that makes sense, even to me. 
and I don't know that much about the blockchain, but this this application seems to have relevance in terms of using the blockchain as an underlying technology to support it. And the good news for the Provenance Chain Network is that they announced that they have raised $10.5 million in equity-based financing, plus they also just announced that they secured a, a, a NIST SBIR grant that was associated with the CHIPS Act. I don't have a dollar value there, but the beauty of that one, that's non-dilutive capital. So that's a grant. So they've, they've got, they, they had to give away a little equity to get the $10.5 million, but they also have this grant through the, the SBIR program to, to also fuel their growth. So great news this week, kind of a, a twofer, a double win for our friends at the Provenance Chain Network. Congratulations to them on finding the funding and the runway to continue building this, the only solution I've heard of on the blockchain that actually makes sense. And really happy that they're building it right here in Portland. Uh, so we, out of the, out of the kind of funding realm into the like product launch realm, because like, and then well, we'll go back to some funding stuff. Don't you worry. The plenty of funding this week, but the, uh, you know, there's a company in town called 4G. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please, please let me know if I'm not, but I see it as 4G. And, uh, what 4G does is take kind of like, city codes and zoning and those kind of things that are very bureaucratic and confusing and like hard to understand as a, as a, you know, a consumer or maybe even, even as a commercial developer, maybe you're wanting to build a building and you're like, how tall can it be in this area? Is it zoned for business, commercial, manufacturing, heavy manufacturing, like what have you? What if I want to put solar panels? on my building. Can I do that? So what 4G does is enable you to search very quickly and have it intelligently search through kind of code and zoning and kind of deliver back to you like, yeah, you can do that. Or here's something you might think about or that kind of thing. So they released a product called Code Clarifier this week. Why is that important? Well, A, it's important that startups launch products and get them in market. And so I'm really happy that they were able to get it out this week, uh, you know, made a, made a big splash with their new product. People are talking about it. I think, I think they're on to something here for sure, because anything that takes a, a kind of boring bureaucratic industry and simplifies it and makes it more accessible with technology, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, so, so excited to see what 4G does with this. But I think the other important part of 4G getting that product out this week is where are they going to be next week? That's right. They're going to be at Ben Venture Conference because next week is Ben Venture Conference. And if you're not familiar with BVC, Ben Venture Conference is the largest early stage angel stage investment competition in the galaxy all right maybe not the galaxy i don't know like the on the west coast like west of the rockies west of the mississippi it's big it's big and important and like if you're trying to find equity-based financing as an early stage company making it onto the stage at bvc can be a huge leg up for you and your company and give you a great chance of attaining the investment you need to survive and thrive. That all happens October 17th and 18th. Where? Yeah, that's right. Bend. Bend, Oregon. They, that's why they call it the Bend Venture Conference. And I know a bunch of people are going down there. I'm going to go down there for a bit. So uh, excited to see what's going on down there and, and who shows up for Bend Venture Conference. But uh, all that being said, a pitch competition is not terribly exciting without companies to stand on the stage and pitch what they're building. And so I thought I would read off to you the companies that will be participating at Bend Venture Conference 2024 in Bend on October 17th and 18th. Also, just by way of saying, probably won't be able to give you the winners next week. So by the time stuff wraps up, 
the episode will already be out. It'll be kind of like, you know, last week with like Mitch, where I was like, oh, I got big news that I can't tell you about yet because it, it hasn't come out yet. And then I had to do the special episode and, and Mitch Doherty was like inaugural lead of the small business office, office of small business for Portland. And that was all exciting. And I'm super excited about it. I'm excited for him. But yet I couldn't cram it into the episode. So that's probably what's going to happen next week with Ben Venture Conference. I don't know that I will record a special episode, but rest assured, I will let you know who walked away with the big checks at Ben Venture Conference. But who is in the running for BBC? I'm glad you asked. So let me read off the companies. I'm going to look down at my screen. If you're listening on the podcast, you, you won't even notice that I'm looking down at my screen because you can't see me. But if you're on the YouTube, you can see me looking at the screen. So let me read off the companies, let you know who's going to be pitching, what stage they're pitching for, and then uh, you know you can kind of pick your favorites and, and cross your fingers that on October 18th they walk away with the big checks. Okay, cool. Here's BVC. So 4G, as we already mentioned, uh, we, the royal we. Uh, as I already mentioned, 4G is pitching. They're an early stage company, also in that cohort, Howlet Spoon, Offer House, Prophetic, Rose City Robotics. And as I mentioned before, uh, you know, three of those companies, 4G, Prophetic, Rose City Robotics, are upstart collective residents. So 60% of the early stage companies are part of upstart collective. So that's an interesting trivial fact for you. The other interesting trivial fact is 80% of the companies are from the Portland metropolitan area. So there you go. So that's early stage finalists. The new economy track finalists, largely companies from outside the region, Asha Healthcare, Hamilton Perkins, Hardcore PB, Home Lending Pal. Those companies will, will be pitching for a special prize. And then the big companies, the growth stage finalists. I'm so excited. My voice is cracking yet again. Growth stage finalists at BVC are Beginly Health, Green Canopy Node, Health Elements, AI. They're just Health Elements, but I noticed the AI, <laughs> the AI link. Uh, Promedics and Square Baby. So those are all the folks who are participating in, in all the things down there at, at Ben Venture Conference. Again, I'm excited to take the journey. I I don't know what to expect. It's been a few years since I've been at BBC, but uh, you know I'm going to go down there and meet with people, hang out, see what's going on. I will report back to you. Or if you happen to be making the journey down to BBC, please let me know. Like maybe we hang out at Broken Top or we can grab coffee or something while you're down there. I mean, I'm going to be meeting with a few people, but there's still time on my schedule. If you're around and you want to chat, I would be happy to connect with you down at Ben Venture Conference. And please, each and every one of you companies and founders who are pitching, rest assured that I'm rooting for each and every one of you. I hope you have an excellent pitch at Ben Venture Conference 2024. And then finally, like we kind of started with funding and pitching and all those kind of things. You know, there's the Pitch Latino, there's Crescendo, there's Provenance Chain Network, and then and then we talk about 4G and 4G being at BBC. And then finally, bringing it full circle, our friends at Oregon Venture Fund, who sponsored Pitch Latino and will be at BBC. Of course, they'll be at Ben Venture Conference. They're the Oregon Venture Fund. Why wouldn't they be? have been venture conference. So uh, OVF has partnered with SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, to host a quick pitch competition coming up in late October. I, I don't have the exact date because the date I'm focused on is October 15th. If you as a founder would like to pitch at this event, the Portland Quick Pitch event, your decks are due by October 15th. That's when they're deciding on who's pitching and all that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so here's the thing. 
I joked about this in my post. Uh, you remember that bit where there's like eight minute abs? You know what's better than eight minute abs? Seven minute abs. And so uh, just got out of Pitch Latino, which was five minute pitch. I often highlight Demolicious, which is a three minute pitch. But this Oregon Venture Fund, Silicon Valley Bank thing, two minute pitch. So it's not quite an elevator pitch, not quite like the 30 seconds, but it's not like a three minute demolitious pitch. It's two minutes. Three minutes is too long. Two minutes, fast pitch. Three minutes, plenty of time to think. Five minutes, <laughs> all the time in the world. But two minutes, OVF is gonna, gonna keep you to it. They're gonna cut your mic. They're gonna, they're gonna give you the hook get you off stage. So if you are confident as a founder that you can wedge a good story into two minutes and you have time to kind of propose that before October 15, please consider applying to pitch at the OVF PDX Fast Pitch sponsored by Silicon Valley Bank, I think is what it's called. Maybe. And it's a fast pitch. Then just apply and see what happens. Because I would, I would love to see what your two minute pitch looks like. All right, cool. So that's it this week. Lots of EC news, a little grant news, lots of pitch news. I uh, hope you're hanging in there and uh, hope to catch up with you at BVC if you happen to be down that way. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.